What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Holistic Nootropics Podcast, where we discuss using nootropics, biohacking, and nutrition to help you boost your cognition. My name is Eric. I'm the founder of HolisticNootropics.com, where we talk all about and blog all about different nootropics and biohacking concepts. We have an entire nootropics library. So if you are interested in learning more about different nootropics, supplements, biohacks, finding the best nootropics for different things you got going on, then you can head on over to HolisticNootropics.com, use our nootropics finder, and then you can also download a copy of our free supplement buying guide. This is a guide I created to help people really kind of weed out the junk and find the best quality supplements and nootropics that are being sold on the market today because the supplement industry is a $100 billion industry and most of it is absolute garbage because it's filled with all kinds of preservatives and fillers and excipients that companies use to speed up production, uh, give the products longer shelf lives, and at the end of the day, they can trigger different sensitivities in the body, they diminish the quality of the supplement of the specific nutrient that you want. So you want to know what these ingredients are to look out for them and avoid them because there are really good products that are out there. So head on over to holisticnootropics.com, get that supplement buying guide, leave it on your desktop, leave it on your phone. So that way, when you start going around and buying different supplements, you know what to watch out for. So today we're going to talk all about methylene blue. Uh, We're going to talk about what methylene blue is, uh, its biochemistry, how it works in the body, um, why I think or don't think that this is a good supplement to take, who this might work best for, and we'll talk about some side effects and dosing. Of course, all of that is timestamped down below the video in YouTube, so if you want to just skip to a particular thing that I'm talking about, you can just do that via the timestamps below. So let's start off by just discussing what is methylene blue? Where did it come from? Why would I? Why would you want to take methylene blue? Can you trust methylene blue? First off, I will tell you that you can probably trust methylene blue being that it is one of the most well-researched compounds and medicines that's being sold today. This the, the history of it goes all the way back to 1876 and if you do a if you do a uh, search for um, methylene blue in PubMed. So if you go into the PubMed search bar and type in methylene blue, you'll come up with over 24,000 entries. That's how well researched and well established methylene blue is. So it, its history does go back to 1876, where it was uh, first used as a just a simple textile dye, and then it was started. Uh, it started to be used in the laboratory settings, um, and then it became a uh, drug that was used as a medicine back in the 1890s. It was used for the treatment of malaria, and. The problem is, is that it was very effective and the only reason it never really took off was because people who used it complained about the blue urine. So that is an issue. If you use methylene blue, um, and I use methylene blue almost every single day, depending on how you use it, you're going to experience blue urine. You're probably going to experience a blue mouth, a blue tongue. There are ways to get around that, you know, because I know you do see some people on social media. I've recorded a few videos where my tongue was blue and people just like barraged me. So um, not that I care because it doesn't really matter. I'm getting health benefits. I don't care what people think, but I understand that, you know, people got to go to work. You got to be around people. So you don't want to just be walking around with a blue mouth. That could be a little off-putting in social situations. But like I said, there are ways to get around that. I'll tell you about that as the video goes on. So people would get nervous because they would take methylene blue they would find that it worked, but then they would start peeing blue and people kind of panicked and they would stop doing it. So it never really took off. During World War II, actually, they used methylene blue to treat soldiers for malaria. And even Douglas, uh, General Douglas MacArthur had a saying, it says, even at the loo, we see, we pee navy blue. So um, one thing that I, I think is uh, really telling about this, uh, about this nootropic, where they really Uh, figured out its nootropic benefits was back again uh, around the World War II time, 1950s-ish time. um, It was used to test compliance in psychiatric patients who were institutionalized. So what they wanted to do was they wanted to, uh, they wanted to test and see if patients with schizophrenia could comply with taking their, their specific medication. So what they would do 
is they would, um, uh, they didn't give the patients specific uh, schizophrenia medication. They gave them methylene blue tablets and the people would take them. And the way that they knew whether they were in compliance or not was whether their urine was blue. And just as like, uh, like kind of an aside, they started to see that these people with schizophrenia, also bipolar disease and acute psychosis, they noticed that these people, their conditions improved. So not only did they figure out, okay, these people are in compliance because we know because their urine is blue, but their their psychiatric issues have improved. And that's when they figured out that methylene blue has these nootropic benefits. So like I said, it's a very well studied compound, has over 24,000 entries in PubMed. So if you do decide to use this, you could rest assured that it has been well studied. This isn't like a research compound, although it, it technically is sold like that from, um, from a particular, uh, provider that I use, but it's, it's well established and it's becoming more and more popular and there's really no downside to it. So how does methylene blue work? Well, the big thing with methylene blue is that it's an electron donor. So methylene blue is both hydrophobic and lipophilic, which means that it's permeable through the cellular membrane. It can go all the way down towards uh, into the organelles into the uh, 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 by the mitochondria. So it donates electrons to complex four in the mitochondria. So um, what does that mean? So if you if this is like if I'm speaking another language to you, let me break it down in the most simplistic in the most simplistic way. So in the cell, you have the organelle, the mitochondria. And so this is where all of your cellular ATP, they call this the powerhouse, the powerhouse of the cell, because it's the ATP that's produced that powers the cell. It powers, I mean, just about every physiological function of your body. So nowadays we're starting to find out through uh, a lot of research that a lot of different chronic diseases are led, uh, 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 come from dysfunction of the mitochondria. So the mitochondria powers everything from the way that glucose is metabolized, like glycolysis, the Krebs cycle. I mean, all the way to, you know, the way that your liver functions, the way your kidney functions, the way your brain functions, um, all throughout your body, basically every part of your body uses ATP. So you need, you need ATP to, to be optimal, to be working correctly, to avoid disease. So, um, in the mitochondria, the way the ATP is made is through the electron transport chain. And so there is a, uh, there's a complex process of like, for instance, when you eat something that carbohydrates are broken down through a process called glycolysis, and then those metabolites go into the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle kicks out different, um, uh, it kicks out these different uh, metabolites that basically transport electrons into the electron transport chain in the mitochondria. And then the mitochondria or the electron transport chain is made up of four proteins and then a fifth protein called ATPase. That's like the motor that makes, uh, that makes the ATP. So the electron plays like a hot potato. It goes from complex one protein to complex two protein to complex three protein to complex four protein. And all that while, while the electron is being passed, it's creating an electrical gradient along the, uh, along the surface of the mitochondria. And so what that does is that starts pulling more electrons in eventually into the ATPase, uh, engine that makes the ATP. And, uh, I believe it's for every one molecule of uh, a different metabolite that comes from the, uh, Krebs cycle. You're going to get anywhere from, uh, you're going to get around like 30, 35, I think it's 37 ATP. So this is a very efficient system. Now, the problem is, is that when ATP is made along the uh, electron transport chain, what you also get are the byproducts, which uh, is oxidation. Um, uh, what do you call them? Um, uh, free radicals. And so when you start getting these free radicals, you get oxidative stress. And so you got to think about it like this. 
as an electron moves, there's more free radicals being made in the process. So as it goes from complex one to complex two, you're going to get free radicals. As you go from complex two to complex three, you're going to get more free radicals. As it goes to complex three, complex four, you're going to get more free radicals. What methylene blue does to kind of wrap everything all together is it's an electron donor. So it donates electrons straight to complex four. So it bypasses one through three. So you're missing all of that excess uh, oxidative stress that's going to come from complex one to complex three, and it goes straight into complex four. So it's almost like, um, like what's a good analogy? It's almost like, hey, if you had to drive from your house to, uh, to the store, it's like, you know, you're going to, you're going to come across traffic. You're going to have more, uh, more chances to get in an accident. You're going to have more chances to, you know, run out of gas. You're gonna have more chances to have a flat tire. Imagine though, if you could just be transported from your house to a street just before the store. So if you got to drive like 10 miles of, uh, let's say three miles to the store, this automatically transport to you all the way to mile two and a half. So you just bypassed all of that other traffic, all of those other opportunities to have something bad happen, and now you're almost there. And so as this donates an electron, uh, electron to complex four, then it's a very seamless transition to get that electron back uh, to uh, create the byproducts from that and then power the ATPase to make ATP. So. That's what's happening at the molecular, uh, at the uh, cellular level. That's why this is such a potent compound because you're going to start making more ATP. When you have more ATP, you have more cellular energy. Your cells are going to be much healthier. Your body's going to be much healthier, and everything's going to work much better. Now, in terms of the actual benefits, methylene blue has antiviral benefits. Of course, it was used to treat malaria. Uh, it has antibacterial benefits. Um, some have even written that it has some anti-cancer benefits, although I'm not promoting that's the use of it. And also anti-COVID benefits, oddly enough, because it is antiviral. Um, specifically, methylene blue does cross the blood-brain barrier where it exerts it in its neuroprotective effects. So that's really the main nootropic benefit of methylene blue is its neuroprotection. So if you have an issue, uh, if you are afraid of developing something like Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease, or maybe um, you have Huntington's in your in your genes, and you you know maybe that's upcoming for you. Whatever it is, uh, let's say you are, are, are trying to stave off something like uh, ischemia, a stroke. Um, methylene blue can be very helpful. It does prevent the um, uh, amyloid beta and tau protein aggregation, or it can also dissolve existing aggregates via autophagy. Um, and therefore, that's going to eliminate the downstream consequences of those proteins, which have been linked to Alzheimer's. So it's specifically the cytochrome C oxidase activity. So it's, complex four is actually called cytochrome C oxidase, and it's that activity that has been shown to reduce Alzheimer's disease. So the more cytochrome C oxidase activity you have, the more complex four activity you have, the better neuroprotection you have. And again, that's specifically what happens in methylene blue. Um, as far as effectiveness that has been seen in clinical trials, there's a lot of animal trials. There's also quite a few human trials. There's one double blind uh, randomized placebo controlled trial of, um, of a uh, methylene blue product that was conducted in 332 subjects who experienced an 81% reduction in the rate of cognitive decline in 50 weeks. And then, of course, there's been many studies done in animals that also show the benefits for Parkinson's disease and memory enhancement. So, like I said, if you're looking for that neuroprotection, if you're looking for the memory enhancement, which, I mean, let's face it, that's what, as you start getting a little older, that's what you want because you start to feel your memory go a little bit. I'm in my 40s. I'm starting to feel that cognitive decline, and I, I, I feel like I have been slowing it down with my use of nootropics. And once I got methylene blue into the mix, it's like a whole new ball game, you know? Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about my own personal experience with it here in a few minutes. Now, Another major nootropic benefit of methylene blue is its antidepressant activity. That's because methylene blue is an MAO inhibitor. So it, uh, so you're going to get some, at the very least, low-level antidepressant activity. Um, and this is also why if you use methylene blue, you do want to 
avoid, um, you know, serot serotonergic compounds because it does also boost serotonin. So you want to avoid it, you know, the tyrus, uh, the, um, the dopamine boosting nootropics. You also want to especially avoid the serotonin supplements. So the St. John's wort, the five HTP, um, SSRIs, especially you, you don't want to use methylene blue while you're using that stuff. Also the L tyrosine, the nine MEBC things that are known to boost dopamine. Um, also, uh, um, I'm blanking on the name of it starts with a B bromantane. You want to also avoid something like a bromantane cause that's known to boost, uh, dopamine has a little bit of a MAO inhibitor, um, to it. So you want to avoid those specific nootropics. Now, the best way to take methylene blue, um, it's safe in higher doses. It's been um, tested all the way up, I mean, to very high doses and seems to be very safe. Um, it's known to be safe for using it uh, 0.5 milligrams per kilogram up to four milligrams per kilogram. Um, you're not going to find that high of dose. I mean, if you're like a 70 kilogram person, you know, you're, you're getting close to 300 milligrams of it. And most people aren't using that much. Um, and most of the products out there are, uh, that you're going to buy. Like if you buy, I think there's like a chew there's, um, you know, you don't, it, I'll be honest. They're kind of hard to find. Um, they're not dosed that incredibly high. Um, I also think the best way to take methylene blue is using it along with red light therapy. So if you use methylene blue, maybe like an hour later or so use some red light therapy. That's because red light therapy enhances the, uh, the effectiveness of cytochrome C oxidase in the electron transport chain. So just imagine you have a methyl donor that, uh, I'm sorry, uh, an electron donor donating the raw material to cytochrome C oxidase. And then you have red light therapy, infrared light that is strengthening the ability of of, uh, of complex four cytochrome C oxidase to be even more efficient, to work even better. So you're going to get even better performance out of the mitochondria. So if you have the ability, if you have a red light, uh, if you have an infrared light, if you have an infrared sauna using methylene blue alongside, uh, alongside, uh, infrared sauna is a very, very effective way to enhance your mitochondrial health. And then of course, boosting your overall health as well. So, you know, what are some good stacking options with methylene blue? I love using methylene blue with, um, you know, with my pre-formulated nootropic stack. So like a mind lab pro or a new pep, that's because those include, uh, those are really solid blends of other nootropics like, uh, like alpha GPC or acetylcholine, some different adaptogens, uh, an L tyrosine, but low level, uh, N acetyl L tyrosine. I don't notice any negative effects, but some people do are a little more sensitive to the N acetyl L tyrosine, um, different amino so you can stack it with like a, an L-theanine you could stack it with uh, a carnitine you could stack it with uh, a glutamine you're going to get a lot of benefits with that I love to stack it with a racetam so um, you know on days where I have to really get a lot done and I need some super you know just laser focus I love to use methylene blue with like a paracetam or a phenylparacetam I get a lot of benefits with that like I that's one that I can I can feel I can feel my brain is just cranking in fifth gear and it's like working very well. It's like a Tesla. My brain feels like a Tesla. That's how it feels. Um, and like I said, you don't want to use this if you're on an SSRI or using St. John's wort or 5-HTP because it is a big serotonin booster. So, um, you know, you can come across something like a serotonin syndrome. And I will give one last major warning if you're going to use this. So I like to use methylene blue from this company called CZTL. I'll put a link in the show notes below. Um, because you can buy in bulk and you can make your own for a really good price. You can buy, uh, you know, quite a lot of, uh, of this product and simply just, you know, put it in some water, stir it up, mix it yourself. You can encapsulate it yourself. This is really the most cost effective way. And when you do it like this, you, you know, it comes down to, I mean, I, I don't even know. It's like less than, less than a dollar a dose every single day. It might even be like less than 50 cents a dose, which is probably the most affordable way to do it. When you see other methylene blue products out there, it can get kind of expensive, but I will give you a heads up. If you use the CZTL, if you use the, 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 the compound they sell, they do call it a research compound. 
if you use that product and you do make it yourself, um, you have to be very careful because this stuff is super messy. So I'm talking like one particle of the methylene blue. If it gets out anywhere, it's going to, it's going to be a complete disaster. And I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. Like I've in tried encapsulating this stuff myself and it's not hard to do if you have the right tools to do it. And even then, if you just get one little particle on your counter, that little particle will begin to show up everywhere and it stains and it's very difficult to get out. Like I, I was encapsulating this stuff one time and like other, I, I sprinkled like, like a little bit. We're talking, I mean, nanometers of this stuff, little teeny methylene blue particles just kind of on the counter. I didn't even know. And then I, uh, I moved the scale cause you had to use the scale to do this. And then there was like a little particle. I was like, oh crap. And then I tried to like, you know, dab it with my finger. It's on my finger and then it's on the counter. And then it just kind of goes with you. So it was on my finger and then it would just show up in like my bathroom. It showed up on like the nightstand next to my bed. It showed up like on other parts of my body. It showed up on my baby's face. <laughs> so you really got to be careful. Like I'm not exaggerating all, especially if you know, you got like a, a place and you got a security deposit and then you got just blue dye everywhere. Like your landlord is going to think that you were like a crazy person dying a bunch of stuff and it's impossible to get out and it's probably impossible to explain. Um, but I will say if you do have that problem, you can use a little bit of bleach. Like I'm saying, like just like a squirt of bleach, let it sit for like five, 10 minutes. And then that tends to, that tends to get the stain out. So, um, but otherwise like, don't let that stop. You definitely want to use methylene blue is one of the best, just kind of all around nootropics and supplements, uh, and you know, I hesitate to say medicines that's around there. It's very well researched. It's been around for ever. It's one of, if not the most researched medicine in all of PubMed. And there's no downside. There's no side effects. Uh, as long as you avoid the contraindications through other compounds, like the serotonin enhancers and the dopamine enhancers. But otherwise, you're going to love this stuff. I'd love to know if you have used Methylene Blue. What do you think of the product? Uh, have you used it from other companies? Let me know down in the comments below. And again, if you are new to the channel, please remember to subscribe. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Leave a review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to. And for all things nootropics, biohacking, holistic nutrition, head on over to holisticnootropics.com. Otherwise, everybody, that's all for today. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.